Alright guys, welcome back to the Existential Way. Kevin Meredith here. This is going to be a message today for the Holy Ones and God fears. Alright, now, over the past few days, this catchphrase has been hitting me in the spirit. And I've been thinking about this. Whole wheat bread. At times, we come across words that are formed and put together to create a meaning. But we, a lot of the times we just overlook the construct of these words meaning. And today I want to focus on not only the individual word placement with whole wheat bread, but the connection between the words as well as the overall picture. What does it mean? whole wheat bread because we see we see words but it, it it just seems like in these times everything is being magnified everything is being amplified and, and really it's like it's not that whole new meanings are forming it's just that when they're being magnified in this way we're beginning to see the true nature of words and their placement so i want to focus on this what is it Let's start with the let's start with the word whole. Now we've talked about this idea of becoming complete. And it's not based on one's own understanding or one's own self-image of development. But in terms of how the Spirit has led me to see this word whole, it means complete in the very fact or very nature that God must be the lead. He must be the sole proprietor of what He has in store to make the individual complete or whole. Now, we also have the word wheat. So its scriptural implication is to that of a qualification that I deem as God's seed, the wheat, not of the tear classification. So we have a set of words which are classified in and of themselves. But when we when we begin to put them together, they, they, they expound and they support each other. So we have whole wheat. And then we have bread. Bread is this food, it's a, you know, the, the, the scriptural manna. Now, we know along the historical timeline, God had fed the Hebrew Israelites physically in their time of need, their time of hunger. But now, God has given us His Word. And so we have this Word... John 1, 14, the word came among us and became flesh. Now in the Aramaic, the word is manifestation. So we see that God, he has no beginning and no end. He, he's forever. He, is, he has always been. So he is manifested in and of himself uh, from the deity to the manifestation of the word to the manifestation of the Word dwelling among us in the Son, Jesus Christ, in the flesh. And that flesh had died for three days and was raised up in order that we would receive the, 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 the Comforter, the Holy Spirit. So now God has these parts to Him which shows His continuance. The manna, the spiritual bread, where we, we no longer hunger for the physical, the things that keep, or we thirst for the waters that we keep coming back to, all right? So now we have an eternal, you know, whole wheat bread. Okay, now these are the compartmentalized definitions of the individual words in their, in their spiritual or scriptural placement. But now, when we are to look at what connects them, there is a specificity about why they're connected. Like we say, whole wheat. And it's almost to the point that, can real or true wheat be any other way? 
We talk about the wheat of the Bible. We have these tares who have crept in. We've had these wolves who have crept in unaware. Um, they have called themselves wheat, but they are not the whole wheat or the true wheat. Okay? And anything other than wheat cannot be made whole. That which is fallen, or of the flesh accord, if you will, or the tares, cannot be made whole due to the fact that they are not the wheat. They are corrupted. But when God puts on the incorruptible to his wheat, we are now aiming towards whole, what it is to be whole in God and as an individual. So we come into this life in, or, in order that we lose it, in order that we find it, and we, we go from being born corruptible to being born incorruptible in spirit. Okay? So now the wheat, God signifies there is a spiritual thing that He has going on that He brings about to the nature of His seed, the wheat, the physical nature. And by that very thing, we are changed because we have the spiritual genetic expression to receive the Holy Spirit. To, to, to begin to conclude our wheat nature. Uh, another thing that's very supportive to the overriding meaning of what it is to be whole wheat bread is this word bread. How do we now choose to live? How do we, what do we eat? So we go from the physical nature of, uh, of a worldly hunger to a spiritual, necess a spiritual uh, nature of no longer needing the hunger for the world or, or having the appetite for the world um, because the, the corrupted or corruptible will always have that appetite. Okay? But the bread now has changed over from a physical placement to a spiritual food now. And so we see whole wheat bread. But here's the thing, when we're looking at the overriding effect, or the umbrella, of what connects what it is to exist in this way, we see that we begin broadly, and, we, and, and then word by word we move to specificity. The implication of. So now we have... Uh, Bread, wheat, whole. God feeds by foreknowing that we would come to faith by way of the Spirit, what we've known of God, um, to the understanding that, that we're wheat, in order that we will become whole, born again unto eternal life, eternal salvation. So, not, o not only do we have the individual words, we have what connects and what the supportive nature. Just like when we say Scripture supports Scriptures, this is, this is what essentially Scriptures is doing. And then we have the, 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 the culmination of all of it, of, God, of the totality of God's plan for humanity in that, and how He's working with the human being to become whole wheat bread. Now, this is what gives of, of God's witness in and, through, in and through the ones He's truly chosen out of this world to come to that faith and have a relationship with God by having a relationship with the Son and being made whole. And so, I've been thinking about this, though. Why, why the contention in the community? Why, why do we have itching ears come in? Without the nature of godly wisdom. The nature of godly understanding. And, and, and they solely bring implication upon words that they do not have existence to. They have no testimony to. So, essentially, they desire to take apart 
or take from the witness of what God has supplanted in order that the fruits thereof to that which God has supplanted in his own seed, the whole wheat bread, can be marginalized or compartmentalized away from one's own understanding to why whole wheat bread, these, this is the existence of, of completion to God, his own witness through an individual. But what, what happens when the, the corruptible comes in and tries to teach the incorruptible? Then we get man's will, like clay being mixed with iron. But we under, when we come to this place where we're in, one, we're in oneness with God now, as believers, as God-fearers and holy ones, that the impartiality of a non-testimony with commands of you have to do this to become that. You have to do this for man to be accepted by God. So the whole understanding and premise of with the wolves who have crept in unawares even though we who are whole wheat bread are fully aware of who they are if you are in this placement to God's witness in your life but the but the other ones who are blinded still will will attach to this type of belief in which in which their 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 words are actually their works, if you will, are not of any spiritual authority. The commands that they try to preach at us, we actually contain the witness to. So we understand that they are still of the works-based mentality, in which we are of the witnessed, testimonial-based mentality to those works. So these things that they try to teach us, we actually already exist of. But since they can't become of our nature as holy ones and god fears, they try to marginalize with half-truths and teaching teachings of half-truths, if you will. And I and I'm beginning to see that this is the false testimony of Christ. And it's been making it a spiritual struggle in terms of the discernment that Satan would try to bring doubt into someone God has chosen to be made whole. Because I'm for sure someone's going to bring about a comment that is once again, it's not... A, it's never a question that they really want answered. Then they would have to confront themselves and the fact that they have not lived up to the, to the things that they have espoused by Scripture. Because it's not like it's talking to us, it's like it's talking at us. And I hope, and I really hope in my heart of hearts that I have not, in my personal outreach to other targeted individuals, that I have not told you what to do. For the very fact that my sole witness is to give an observation of what's go what's actually going on in the Christian walk, in the true Christian walk, the one in which the individual has been made whole, wheat, and bread, as a witness to God. And so, the works part is a part of the Christian walk, just as being targeted being persecuted, suffering, it's a part of the Christian walk. But it's not the totality of God's calling for your life. God's calling for your life, it only comes by way of His mercy. It only comes by way of Him sending you the Holy Spirit in order that you may become whole wheat and bread, that you may feed from the Word of Spirit, the Word of 
truth, the word of God. And so, I cannot nor will I ever espouse to judge a person on what he or she ought to do according to scriptures. Because that's not God's witness and will for me. If I were to do that, I would have failed my own examination. And so I have to be more forgiving, I have to be more patient in seeing that there will always be those who will keep to the works-based mentality of being accepted by God. But the Holy Spirit has always sort of kept us true targets where that, that I know that I know sense has always been there. That I know that I know witness has always been there. He has never left me. And the titles and what goes for right and wrong is not about the language. It's about the existence. So when you look at the true definition of what it is to be whole, wheat and bread, it's an, it's an existent part which supports its own nature. Like, you know, I can tell you what Scripture says and I can read it to you until you do that. But if I have not existed of that sustenance, um, I have not given you the totality of the definition, the living definition of it. Do you see what I'm getting at? And a lot of the times people who, who talk at, they really have not even lived up to the things that they're reading from scriptures or espousing from scriptures. The idea of you have to do in order that you are, or you have to do in order that you become. This is very dangerous. This is, this is alienation of, of, of the, the ones that truly get persecuted, who have, who are bearing the fruits that God has bore witness to in, their, in our lives, in which the works are in thereof. You know, and that's why I said what you do for people is is your witness to them. That's what you do for people. That's the works that God because it, it is it is by God's works. And I like saying that because it is by God's mercy as in Romans 9:16 once again it is not by he who wills nor he who runs but by God's mercy. And so we have those who, by their own will, by the fact that they're running, have formed their imagination of what it is to be of God without the testimony that has God's mercy become our understanding? Has God's mercy become our testimony? Has God's mercy become our witness to the works of God before men? And so, this is a matter of the Spirit. Not only spiritual discernment, but actually having the Holy Spirit in you. Lives cannot be changed without the Holy Spirit. People do works all day, but it doesn't mean they have the Holy Spirit. Now, when you do these works, and you're truly of God, then you do have the Holy Spirit. But they do not, one does not precede the other. Doing works does not bring the Holy Spirit to your life. Doing works is an act of the Holy Spirit. And so we must have understanding that is by God's mercy that He sends us the Holy Spirit. He does the work for us in order for us to initiate His will. And, the, and the, the spiritual authority to be of witness of a testimony made to life. And so guys, I want you guys to just be so encouraged and so blessed to God's appointment for your life at this point. Especially when it comes to targeted individuals. Um, just be blessed. Learn of the things of God. Learn of His calling for your life. Learning, learn of His blessing for you have understanding with it and sit with it be patient with it and and you will grow you will understand what it is to be a witness of God because it truly is of the works of God 
and the acts of the Holy Spirit. So once again, guys, I thank you for listening in. Be blessed. Stay chosen. I love you guys. All right, till the next one. Godspeed.